In this video, we're going to see how to create a record inside an Airtable collection from a WeWeb app. So here we've got an app with properties that we are fetching from Airtable, which are actually um, houses from friends that we can search using a dropdown and a search bar. So this is all coming from an Airtable base here with some uh, columns like the name, the region, the price, etc. images. And some of them are like a string or numbers and other are related fields, meaning that they actually the data come from other tables like this property type, property region, all of this. And the thing is we wanna let user create a new record here. So from our WeWeb um, app that already has the properties and the regions data, I created a new um, page called create property with a form with all what's needed to enter uh, new data inside the properties table. So it's really simple. Uh, it's simple inputs like this short answer input for uh, the name. The region is a multi-select because uh, we'll need to select France as a whole region and then the specific region. Price is a number uh, here. Uh, surface is also a number, etc. Types and attributes are also multi-select and images is a simple file upload wide, which uh, enable user to upload multiple files at the same time. So the thing we'll need is actually for the multi-select to bind them uh, to Airtable collections, because if you remember well, these come from uh, other tables. So they are counted as other collections inside WeWeb. And why? It's because when in Airtable, you see data like this one, uh, this region inside the record, Actually, what's displayed is the name of the region, but because it's a related field, internally, only the ID of the record, of the region record, is stored inside the property record. So you won't get these names inside WeWeb, so you actually need to fetch them as different collections. So we've done this for regions already, but we'll need to do this for types and attributes. So let's create a new collection called types, which comes from Airtable same base, same uh, actually property type, yeah, uh, as the table, and then we'll select all the fields, it continue. So you see here we get all the data that is coming from this property type table. Then we'll hit continue and we'll remove the pagination. And we'll do the same for the attributes. So let's call it attributes. Select Airtable, same base, but then property attributes, all the fields, and we've got it. And same, remove the pagination. Now it's really easy, we need to bind the values of the multi-select to these collections. For the region one, let's go inside the options, bind them to the regions.data. And be sure to select the collections.data because here we, we, we don't need the metadata from the collection. We actually need the actual data with the name and the ID. And what we'll select is the label, so what the user will see, which is actually the name. And the value is the ID. So when the user selects a region, the ID of this region will get stored. And this is because we'll send this ID back to Airtable to store it inside the new property. And if you check um, in preview mode, you see that now I can select France, for example, and let's select Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur. Nice. Then I will do the same for the type. So same logic, types.data, then label is the name, value is the ID, and same for attributes. Attributes.data, label is the name, again, and ID is still the ID. Okay. Now I need to create the logic to um, create a property using a workflow. But first I will fill my form. So let's call it Villa in Cannes. The price will be something random because we are just testing out. Same for surface, sleeping rooms, bathrooms. Type is all and seaside, seaside villa and attributes, 
Uh, let's add it a swimming pool, a parking, a jacuzzi, and a garage. Okay. Now I will add some images coming from Unsplash. So upload them inside WeWeb. And you see that what this element is doing is that it's uploading these images to the WeWeb CDN content delivery network so that you get a um, public URL that you can use later in your workflows. And this is really important because what Airtable will do at the end is read data from this URL and send it, upload it, oops, sorry, to the Airtable servers. So now we can get to the workflow. So I will click on the submit button. And here, as WeWeb is telling me, I need to create this workflow actually on the form container so that I can use the form submit trigger. So let's create it, call it create property and keep the on submit trigger. But actually the first thing we're gonna do is that we'll need to create a um, variable to store the images that will get sent to Airtable. Why? It's because when I upload images to WeWeb, I get a big object with all the metadata and the Airtable API is only wanting the URL of the file and the name. So if we send anything else, the Airtable API will uh, reject these files. So to do this, we'll do some kind of loop to loop over the images and store them in a new variable. And in this variable, we'll only store the data that Airtable wants. So I'll go inside data, create a new variable, call it images to upload to Airtable. Let's make it an array because we'll, we'll have multiple images. So we'll store each of them inside an array and create it. Okay. First thing is actually to change a uh, reset, sorry, the variable value of this variable, because if you're submitting multiple uh, properties, every time you want to submit only the new images. So you need to reset this variable as an empty array um, at the beginning um, of, the, um, of the workflow. So let's do this and test it. So basically, if I go in debug mode, in variables, and I search images to upload to Airtable, I got my empty array. Then I will need to use a for loop because I will loop over all the images that were uploaded to WeWeb. And the items to parts are actually all the items that WeWeb will loop over in this workflow. So I will bind them and I will bind them to the file URLs because file URLs is the internal variable of this element. You see that here I get the URL of the file and the name and also some extra data. So now I can do a test to test my for loop. And inside this action, what I will do is that I will do a change variable value on my images to upload to Airtable, and I will insert at end. So push a new element at the end of the array. And what I want here is uh, actually the data that is coming from my loop item. So you see, I've got my current file. But because I need only the URL and the name, and the name needs to be called file name for Airtable, I will uh, only push a new object. So I will use the create object formula. As the URL key, I will use the URL of the file. And as the file name key, I will use the name of the file. So each time I'm pushing a new variable, which is an object with the URL and the file name. So if I test it, and you see here in my images to, uh, to, to upload to Airtable, I get the URL and the file name of each of my files. Nice. Then I need a simple create a record inside Airtable, and I will select my properties collection. And here I will bind all the fields that I want to fill uh, to create a new property inside Airtable. So I will bind them to the values of my form actually. So the name is simply the variable name, price is the price, and I mean you get it, then it's simple binding, Sim sleeping rooms, bathrooms, uh, what is bathrooms here, uh, and this I don't need, so I won't bind it, uh, I can let it empty, and now I need to bind my uh, related fields, and related fields are indeed, oops, sorry, are indeed arrays. So now for the region, 
what I will do is that I will uh, bind it to the current selection of the region multi-select. And you see, because I selected the IDs as the value, I only get the IDs back. And that's exactly what Airtable is expecting. So it's actually the IDs of the regions that were selected. Same for the type. Same for the attributes. And then for the images, I will bind it to my images to upload to Artable. And you see, I get my lists of objects with URL and file name. And if I test this step and I go in logs, you see that it was created. And if I go back to my property table and I reload my page, you see here, I've got my new record Villa in CAN with all the things I selected and my images. And then to display it in WeWeb, I simply need a new action, fetch collection, where I will fetch the properties. Why? Because I need to tell WeWeb to load again this collection inside uh, WeWeb, this, this Airtable collection inside WeWeb, so that it can display the new, um, uh, sorry, the new um, element in my collection. Okay, so if I were to test it again by reloading my page, going into preview mode, let, let's call it Villa in uh, Marseille, France, Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur, price is, let's say, really expensive. Then three, two, one, type all, seaside villa still, attributes, uh, jacuzzi, hostels, pound. I don't know, random stuff. Let's upload the same images just for showing you. So let's wait for it to be uploaded and submit. And it was created. So now I can, you can use um, tutorials that we have on the Academy on how to reset this form and actually uh, display a validation message to uh, the user. Because here the data, if I go in my logs, it was created, yeah but the user can't see it. So then you can use like the um, tutorials that we have on YouTube or like the Academy to say to the user, hey, the property was created or there was an error, reset the form. But the thing is, if I go back to the home page and I search for Marseille, you see that I've got my villa that was created. And if I go back in my Airbnb um, Airtable uh, base, I've got my villa in Marseille. So it's working.